This is one big laptop. This is a Republic of Gamers, Asus Republic of Gamers Model G74S. Um, yeah, it's built like a tank. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Check out the profile on that. It's as big as the old laptops out of the sort of the 90s. See solid right through here. Apparently it doesn't turn on, I think. Uh, just flashes a light. Let's plug it in and find out. So right there, the power light is blinking rapidly. So right away that tells me that the um, charger is probably shutting down due to a short circuit overload. Some kind of overload on the input there where it's trying to come on and fails and drops off or it could be I don't know maybe it's further in with the charging circuit perhaps and it's coming up and then dying but that's what it looks like uh, right off the bat we have some kind of uh, overload condition so we're on our load tester here and it's able to maintain 19 volts at 5 amps so pretty sure it's not just the uh, charger itself shutting down due to poor regulation well, a whole lot of screws and a couple of cable unplugs later and I'm thinking this should just pop off. Just need to spudger your way around the edge and it does pop up. The whole keyboard will come off. Or will the keyboard come off? Or will the bottom fall off? Uh, no, uh, uh, looks like the keyboard might actually separate. Just, just having a peer down in there. And once you've vacuumed half of the owner's rug out of it, this is sort of what you get. <laughs> There's quite a, about one, two, three, uh, four, five, um, ish, yeah, five cables holding the keyboard, connected to the keyboard, mouse and buttons and that. Um, there is, at the back of the screen, um, you've got this. Now, once you've removed all of the screws, this just, just sort of sort of grab it. Imagine the screen's up here. Um, and you just sort of grab it and um, it unclips, and that gives you access to uh, two screws on each side that hold the hinges on, so you can get the screen off. Uh, and you need to get that off in order to be able to release the keyboard because it comes right up, right up under it. Uh, and then once that's off, which is a bit of juggling, um, you can unplug the screen cables and get rid of that. Let's carry on. We've got some more screws to go. Um, got one there, one up the front, uh, and one over here. So a couple more screws to go. We'll get the whole thing out and we'll, and we'll give it a good once over. What a horrible thing to get apart. So there's a black strip of tape along here which I've removed that separates the heat sink from the fan. Um, and then I thought, well, this, this is a VGA socket sticking out through the case, so maybe I have to lift this side first and, and pull it out that way but the battery connector is not having a bar of it, it was just, I was just I couldn't figure out what was holding it and then I saw it was sort of wanting to bend there so you've actually got to push the case outward enough for this to come up past it and I think that's going to do it um, I'll just unplug that connector up the front there and if we lift and sort of bend the case out a bit, there we go, so I've freed that up and it's coming away from the fans down here and if we can lift that very gently and there it goes so you can see the, the battery connector sticks out quite a way so that has to come out uh, yeah the fans stay in there you need to unplug them but uh, what a mission we're going to have to redo the thermal compound on this there was a little bit of flexing going on there but she looks alright now I vacuum up some of the, the dirt, um, fluff and stuff. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, I don't know if that RAM popped out. It doesn't actually feel like it's, uh, it's not clicking in. It's kind of just half up. That's interesting. It is resting against the other RAM, RAM but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's, uh, shorting against it. I think it's just sitting there, but we'll have to have a look at that. 
<coughs> so just having a look at uh, the SD card, oh, SD card, memory card slot. And if we look at the top slot, you can see how the uh, locking arm is nice and straight. And if we look at the one underneath, uh, it's uh, bent outwards, which uh, is causing, I mean, it should be encouraged to spring to spring back inwards, but it's only being encouraged to uh, spring outwards because this uh, metal strip up the side here has uh, what's well, been forced open far too hard is what's happened it's bent the metal support spring sort of bit of spring steel there I guess it's spring steel uh, so it won't uh, hold lock in and it's the uh, it's the same on the other side and it's just been bent out too far so we'll look at uh, repairing that but there's no point if it doesn't work so let's not worry about that till we've got it working and uh, who could tell me where we should start with a possible input uh, fault? Any takers? If you said by the DC in socket, you're right. So if we head up here, oh, in fact I might just move, I'm running out of bench space. If we head up here, there is our DC in socket and uh, looks like it's been toasty and warm there's a little bit of discoloration on there and hello if we look over here this looks like our input fit and it appears to have gotten really hot as well now input fit is not going to be connected to ground geez look at the tarnishing on there it looks like that's got hot this whole area has gotten hot so uh, yeah, the input fit's not going to short to ground. It's going to pass our input current through to the rest of the circuit. So something that it's feeding, I reckon, has got real hot. And uh, if we go in closer, you seeing what I'm seeing? Giant crack. Giant in microscopic terms. This thing's blowing its uh, lid. So we've got discoloration on on here with the uh, these would be low resistance uh, current shunts for measuring input current that's gotten really hot all that blue tarnishing so hopefully they are still okay the first thing in line I think and I'm just making a educated guess here is that once our DC in passes through here we have two fets here and a large inductor so the, these two fits at the top and they are going to be switching um, my guess possibly switching the 19 volts in and dropping it to uh, maybe 12 for the rest of the system to use perhaps just at a if I had to guess but uh, that being what looks like the first thing in line here because we've got uh, goes through our through our MOSFET through the current sense resistors and we have what looks like traces that run here uh, yeah so one of these is going to switch to ground and one of them is going to switch to power and I at the moment I would bet that the one that switches to ground is probably our fault that shorted um, and has dumped all the fault current through this little unit and blown it. So first of all we're going to take a resistance measurement from uh, our DC input and just see what it is measuring to ground directly. So if we go from uh, you can see a little bit of solder there which uh, that's our center pin it just comes through to here so it's pretty easier to poke onto that there's two of them that uh, jump across so we go here and then ground is going to be uh, usually any bit of copper exposed copper so we'll jump onto the screw mounting hole here and that's not it so let's just go to the outside of the uh, of the case here All right. 
I'm not getting a reading there. There we go. Okay, so our exposed copper is definitely ground. But there's no short. That's interesting. So, it's not our power supply that's just shutting down. If we go to resistance, we've got 13,000 13, ohms. So, I'd almost guess what's happening is the light's flashing because it can't pull enough current through our damaged uh, input FET there. Uh, it's not probably not a short to ground as much as it is. This is just burnt out and it can't of course pull any current through it so when it tries to turn on it lights up briefly it fails uh, let's measure the uh, output of this inductor to ground well I got three ohms there so that seems a bit low I don't think I should have three ohms there there's a positive rail it's marked at 25 volt caps what is this showing up at okay so they are hundreds of K ohms so that's okay but uh, to come straight off this inductor and have a low resistance is a bit concerning let's have a little bit of a quick look around see if there's any other darkened damaged uh, looking components looks like that goes straight to our uh, uh, graphics chip okay well let's start with the obvious I mean, may as well. We don't have a schematic. I haven't looked, but you know, where's the fun in uh, in in getting a schematic when you can, you know, try and figure it out? <laughs> and because it's been super hot, we're probably going to need to be super hot in case it's uh, welded itself to the pads. So, well, I'm going to go up to about 380C and uh, go in from a distance until I'm close enough to matter, rather than putting it on a low heat and sitting there for ages. Uh, I wonder if we should measure those uh, current shunts. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, they're really, really low, so it's a good sign. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Because I can actually see the PCB starting to delaminate, which is not good. <laughs> One should never really pull on stuff while it's hot. <laughs> and we might have to try a different approach. I think, like uh, maybe something like this. We shall physically remove the old one and then deal with each pin one at a time. Uh, that's probably easier. Oh. I think. Uh, I don't know if the heat from me or the heat from the thing cooking itself has uh, caused the delamination, but uh, here we go. We're only going to be the main top trace there anyway, so 
We wouldn't have lost much if it did come up. Anyone get that number? So it is an FDS6679 AZ uh, and it's a P-channel MOSFET uh, good for 13 amps of the 9 milliohm on resistance specially designed to have a low on resistance for high powered devices like notebooks and gaming notebooks that suck a lot of power so there you go I don't even know if I got one of those or equivalent we have to have a look here is another random laptop board I don't remember what model it is but there's a fit beside the uh, battery connector at least I don't know where the DCN is on this but yeah it's in that area 44079 and as you can see it is a channel MOSFET minus 30 volts 12 amps uh, pretty low resistance oh, RDS on depending I don't know what our uh, gate source voltage is in this particular application uh, where is that other data sheet we had does this give a rating for a given VGS RDS on Oh, here we go. 7.7 7 at 10, 11, 4.5. Yeah, minus 10 is 13 um, in this one. And 7 in that one. So the resistance differences aren't huge. I think we could throw it in and see what happens. Um, at least we can find out if it's going to work or not, or if we have other problems. And uh, go from there. Uh, if it feels like it's getting a bit too hot when it's on. Uh, because it's RDS is too big then we'll need to get the original spec but for now we just need to make it work and make sure everything's happy get all those legs off don't we Kind of need shears in a uh, cotton swab factory, huh? <laughs> Do another resistance check. Uh, curiosity to ground on here. I mean, it, I think this could be a main processor line, given how low it is. It's not dead short though. It's up around three ohms, two or three ohms. This could be a high current line to the processor, and I say that because comes out of here comes down here and along here around here and down here and then over here and then under here <laughs> there's our heatsink so you can see it feeds in this way so it's it's a bit of a big deal so it's quite likely legitimately low let's do a quick check on the other 
fits though. Uh, that's probably gate. That's not fine. That's shorted. It appears to be shorted. That's fine. We've got our half bolt that way. Uh, and nothing that way in the gate or is the gate over this side I think the gates over this side there we go uh, no, they're all checking connected through as well check them out of circuit okay so if we test uh, one side to the other oh look there's a half volt drop so fit's definitely not shorted go the other way of course there's nothing if we go gate to there we've got nothing uh, and then if we go back to our drain <coughs> it has turned our MOSFET on we're showing a zero ohm resistance uh, zero diode volt drop one way you can turn these off is to put your finger on them and the capacitance through your skin just uh, discharges the gate enough to switch it off so that you may have to hold it on for a, a couple of seconds but uh, that, that certainly enough to turn them off again and then we're back to our normal body diode so they're testing fine so there's not a problem there I feel like I should run this up on the bench supply so that if it is going to draw an excessive amount of current we'll be able to see and uh, deal with it before it cooks instead of waiting for something to happen because we can't see the current draw you ready to see some smoke actually I'm going to turn the current down a bit more <laughs> let's just tap it on see what happens Ooh. nothing no oh, very brief it's 20 milliamps and nothing happens it did draw a bit of a surge initially um, but I think that's probably just caps charging up. Yeah. Okay. We're still at half an amp. Capable. Cool. Okay. Well, while it's on, uh, let's do a quick voltage measurement off that inductor. Just see if it's uh, creating some kind of rail. Voltage in. 18.9. Near enough. Voltage on this inductor up the top that we were concerned about. Nothing nothing at all so maybe we've got 19 volts on the current chance so maybe this doesn't kick in and do anything maybe I mean our battery battery input circuits on the other side of the board the far far side of the board so maybe this doesn't kick in and do anything until it's told to maybe we've got a 3 volt regulator happening somewhere else maybe Maybe I should probe some more regulators and see what's going on. What have we got on the other side of the board? Oh, what's going on? Nothing. Uh, oh no, way down there. We're still at 19 volts. We got nothing over there. Nothing there. Nothing up top. Just measuring up in the middle of the board here. We've got nothing all around. Nothing over by the processor. And very little going on, nothing by the RAM of course I tried to find specs on that GPU and it said 75 watts it's pretty high powered that would explain the heat sinking on the supply to it it's quite likely that a couple ohms is extremely valid low resistance for a chip like that so I thought well let's not just assume anything and I flipped the board and I found we have 5 and 3 volts steady over here so it's probably running. Let's get it in the case and see what the standby light's doing and see if it turns on. And what do we got? No light at all, but then I have got the battery out of it. So if that was a charge light, then I suppose that would be... Uh, that would be it. So what happens if I push the power button? Let's look at the screen. And power. Oh, I have a white light down by the keyboard. I have a backlight. I have an image. Oh yeah, we got BIOS. <laughs> cool. Okay, looks like uh, 
Looks like another case of um, seabed replace bed and not much fault finding to do really. Which is good for us and good for the owner. I've also I straightened up the arms on the ram slot and uh, it's holding securely. Just had to bend them the other way inwards to stretch the metal back that way. Uh, it seems to be good. Let's get the whole thing back together with the drives and make sure it boots and functions. It probably needs to do some sort of self-recovery. Oh, there we go. Uh, yay, that took a while. I mean, for a high-spec gaming PC, that took a while. I do not know the password. <laughs> not to worry. She's done. Thank you for watching another one. I hope you're all healthy and well, given the current circumstances around the world. And we'll catch you all next time.